Massive Wealth series is back. You have asked me so many questions regarding Massive Wealth and this time it is related to your spouse, your marriage, your lover, marriage as an institution. So is it possible that we can identify using astrology if you will be wealthy after marriage? Well, not directly. There is no way to say. Of course, you can say if after your marriage the periods are good, financially then you are very, uh, you 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 are uh, you are you are doing good financially but that's like something very obvious right but apart from that apart from the obvious things you know good dasha good chart you know after the age of 25 28 is there something specifically which we can use to find out if irrespective of whichever dasha mahadasha antar dasha you are running that you will become wealthy after marriage or after you get into a relationship primarily this is for marriage okay yes there are some clues which you can get but one disclaimer for this you have to <coughs> see these combinations in both the horoscopes like you might have seen for the massive wealth series we have seen only for our chart right but here we also have to see it for our spouse so if it is there in only one person's chart then uh, it's not bad, but it may not uh, be like, you know, super extraordinary. But if it is there in both the charts, then it is it is almost guaranteed that there will be huge amount of wealth. Now, uh, when I say these things, it means among these 10, at least 5 or 6 has to be there. Okay, all the, the same ones may not be there. So it can be that, you know, the first... Uh, five are there in the husband and the rest five are there in the wife. Okay, so or one or two might coincide. That is also fine. But at least five or six has to be present in both of them. Otherwise, uh, you may get well, but not massive. <laughs> All right. So let's go. And yes, before we begin, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you get married and become wealthy after marriage. All right. And if you want a personalized consultation from me regarding your married life, please go to my website down in the description section or for a career analysis. And yes, if you are new, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up, which you always do when I make videos on massive wealth. <laughs> All right, so number one, this is in your date of birth, in your numerology, if you have three numbers, six, five, and seven. So the number six shows Venus, the number five shows Mercury, which is money, and the number seven shows luck, okay, which is like you get things without doing much. So if you have all the three numbers, now how do you calculate this? For this, you have to see your uh, individual digits first okay like for example you are born on 6th of may 1970 something like that. so then you have 6 5 and 7 okay or suppose your basic number is you know 5 or 6 or 7 so basic number is your sum of the day okay so for example you are born on 23rd then your basic number is 5 if you are born on 5 5th itself then your basic number is anyways 5 right or you are born on 16, then your basic number is 7, you are born on 15, basic number is 6, okay. And one last thing is, you have to add, include your destiny number. Destiny number is like the sum of your entire date of birth, okay. Like you take your complete date of birth and then it comes to 5 and somewhere else you have 6 and 7. Or your destiny number is, you know, 5 and your basic number is 6 and somewhere else there is 5. So, if 5... Uh, 6, 5 and 7, these three numbers are appearing, then it can mean that you have chance of becoming very wealthy after marriage. Why? Because number 6 is opposite sex, you know, Venus and you know, luxury and all this. And number 5 is money and 7 is luck. So it's like opposite sex, money and luck all are together. And if you see uh, many, most of the Bollywood superstars, you will find it in their chart, okay? Like, for example, Shah Rukh Khan has this, then Shilpa Shetty has this, uh, Salman Khan also has this. Of course, he's not married, but <laughs> he still has this, okay? And uh, Abhishek Bachchan has this. So, there, there are many uh, stars who has this, okay? You, I, I can go on and on giving you. You can go and check in their date of births. 
see the basic number destiny number and apart from that the other number somewhere five six seven will be there all right so if you have this congratulations you are very lucky and if you if you also have a spouse who has this then you are like um, you are super lucky okay super duper lucky number two if your dara karaka is in the 10th or 11th then also this can bestow massive wealth now dara karaka indicates your spouse dara karaka is the planet with the least degree so in the chart of degrees you will see the degrees of planets right so the planet with the least degree the lowest that planet is your dara karaka that shows your uh, interactions with you know uh, the opposite sex and in general you know, with, with uh, your spouse in the previous lifetimes okay not literally your spouse okay but interactions your uh, it's like you know the playground okay so if the dara karaka is in the 10th or in the 11th or conjunct the 10th lord or conjunct the 11th lord then this can mean to a large extent that you and your spouse you had a business in your previous lifetimes now it does not mean that this lifetime also you are having that same spouse it does not mean that but because you had you know a joint business or a joint uh, partnership or something like that so for for you to do it now in this lifetime is again easier so if you have this then best is that you and your spouse start some new business uh, together and you will be successful all right <clears throat> Number three, Venus exalted in the Navamsha but in the Kendra. So, Venus, as you know, is the Atma Karaka for the Navamsha chart and is exalted in the sign of Pisces and Kendra is 14710, right, for the beginners. So, if Venus is in Pisces, either in the first house, fourth house, seventh house, or tenth house in the Navamsha, then this can also bestow you massive wealth because venus as you know is the karaka for luxury and you know luxury will not come unless you have wealth and a planet well placed in the navamsha means you are destined by uh, birth from because of the good karma of your previous lifetimes to reap the benefits in this lifetime and when it is in kendra it means you are actually living that life okay so suppose venus is in kendra but not exalted so then you will have luxury but the level will not be that great but suppose you have venus exalted but not in kendra then sometimes you will have a lot of luxury sometimes no luxury so if it is exalted and in kendra in navamsa oh wow that's fantastic so you are destined luxury for luxury and for all time to come all right Number four, if your seventh lord of your Lagna chart you know, is in the eleventh house, okay, and when here I am saying you know Lagna chart, I am just giving you the example where it's the D one, but the lordships, as you know, is always taken from the Bhavachalit chart. So, in your Bhavachalit chart, the seventh lord, if it is in the eleventh house of again the Bhavachalit chart, then this can bestow massive wealth or the other way around 11th lord in 7th 7th lord in 11th why because the 7th house is the house of marriage and 11th house as you know is gains ex ex exponential gains so this can mean that you will get uh, exponentially wealthy after marriage okay uh, so if you have this then it is recommended that you get married okay but of course, this is not like so simple, oh, I have this, you know, should I get married, I'll become a millionaire or something. No, it's not like that. But in general, if you are, you know, uh, having a good marriage and uh, you both are working or even you are working or your spouse is working, the ways you can get wealthy after marriage if you have this position, okay. So if you have this position, it is recommended that if you find somebody, then you get married as soon as possible, okay. Now, the next one. I guess it's number 5. This is brilliant. This is 8th Lord in the 11th or 11th Lord in the 8th. So this, the 8th house as you know is the house of unearned money. It is you know uh, money uh, loan that you get from your friends, family members or even in-laws. Okay. So therefore if you have a connection between the 8th house and the 11th house then it means that somehow somebody from either your own family or from the family of your spouse will help you you know maybe you are starting your own business you know uh, somebody will give you a loan or you know somebody will uh, yeah sponsor it to some extent so you get help from somewhere okay so therefore if you have this then 
you may not become a millionaire but you will get help to start something in your life and uh, like start your own business or yeah primarily business because that is where most of the money is made in general right so if you have this and your spouse also has this then uh, it's brilliant so sometimes i've seen you know suppose you want to start your own business and you go and tell your father your father will say no huh? i will not give but then you know maybe uh, your uh, husband or your wife goes and asks to your father they may they may help you or you ask your father-in-law or mother-in-law you know they might help you you know because they might trust you you know for whatever reason i have seen that this happens suddenly so if you and your wife both have this uh, husband and wife then what happens you you go and ask your uh, father-in-law for help mother-in-law and your husband wife goes and asks to your father or mother in uh, your father mother and then it's like <laughs> both will help each other but they will not help their own children okay this is a, sometimes i have seen this happening so this is great actually number 6 if the dara karaka and mercury mercury is the primary karaka of wealth right if they are connected to each other but they have to be well placed so if the dara karaka and mercury are you know like uh, yeah they are together and uh, yeah if the one of them is exalted you no know, or they are both placed in the kendra or in the fifth house first house ninth house you know and they are not in debility or you know, not in enemy sign both of them or maybe dara karaka and mercury are uh, aspecting each other okay then also this can work provided they are well placed so then also you can get massive wealth now how this happens is because dara karaka shows your experiences again from your previous lifetimes with marriage and spouse so this can mean that uh, you are very good in doing business okay uh, with your uh, partner so therefore this can mean that again after marriage you know you can start your own business so these are similar placements with the same clues basically so if you have this uh, great time to you know start a hotel or a coffee shop or whatever you know some investing yeah investment firm anything together all right fantastic it is number 7 jupiter aspecting both dara karaka and venus what is jupiter jupiter is the karaka for auspiciousness in life in in general so jupiter's aspect will you know bestow you with uh, yeah honor money like you know things which you don't have to work much for okay so if you have jupiter's aspect on both dara karaka and venus then this is fantastic because it means either through your past life experiences or through your spouse in this lifetime or through the opposite sex or women in general you will earn lot of money okay and that will come relatively easy so wherever jupiter aspects relatively things come easily there okay so if you uh, have this then you know that uh, you don't have to do much uh, but of course everybody has to do karma you know nobody just gets by sitting and doing nothing okay but things will be relatively easy somebody will help you you know your uh, spouse will have some friend you know they will uh, finance your business or something like that okay they, they will help you or they'll give you a loan either ways number 8 if the amatya karaka and dara karaka are together in your chart amatya karaka is the planet with the second highest degree okay first highest degree is atma karak then second is amatya karak and dara karak as you know the least highest degree right lowest degree planet so if the amatya karaka and dara karaka are combined in your chart they are sitting anywhere you know but preferably yeah they should be uh, together and in the kendra houses then this can also bestow you massive wealth because again dara karaka previous lifetimes amatya karaka previous lifetimes you know uh, experiences in your profession and with your spouse so again this is a brilliant combination to you know earn a lot of money and if this combination is present in the second house sixth house tenth house or eleventh house sky is the limit for you number 9 if the dara karaka and venus are related to the second house very 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 important okay so suppose uh, you know dara karaka and venus are together and the second lord is also together or second lord is aspecting so then what happens is you get tremendous you 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 get this blessing to be uh, 
getting married in a you know very rich family sometimes because second house shows you know family and wealth and all this so it's like a family who who has a lot of wealth and you know assets and all this you know so you get all the connections you know all the money all the politicians everybody banks everybody finances you right so therefore if you have this then uh, yeah family will be your support so don't screw it up with your family or with your in-laws all right last but not the least if your dara karaka and atma karaka are connected to the dashamsha lagna dashamsha chart d10 chart which shows your profession in that if the dara karaka and the atma karaka are sitting in the first house or they are related to the ascendant so suppose uh, in your lagna chart you are uh, aries ascendant but in your dashamsha chart you are uh, capricorn ascendant okay so now lord is saturn so suppose saturn is you know conjunct your atma karaka planet with the highest degree and dara karaka okay then then or maybe your atma karaka and dara karaka are sitting together in capricorn in the first house in the dashamsha chart then also the, then also this is applicable so this means you have a very clear focus towards your profession and you want to build it together okay so therefore this can give you uh, again the same thing you know it's like it can help you if you do business together or you know you make some investments and you become very wealthy okay so today we discuss these 10 combinations and these are like uh, you you can do it either with your spouse after marriage or sometimes things come to you through destiny okay like you are married to a very rich family and you don't have to do anything it's like life is sorted okay so nonetheless either through hard work or through uh, smart work or through inheritance or through blessings or whatever uh, if you have five six of these combinations in your chart and in the chart of your spouse then you will see that reasonably these people are more wealthier after marriage and especially do not forget to see the dashas okay so if you have good dashas for profession for both then this will be 10 times more powerful all right and if you don't then you'll still have luxury and money it will be a bit above average but you will have to take solace in that all right but if dashas and transits are supporting sky is the limit for you thank you so much please don't forget to put your comments down what do you think about this video what are some of the other placements that you have seen and if you have seen the horoscopes of people who are very rich very wealthy what have you seen in their in their chart what are some of the placements okay apart from these or among these what have you observed so i would love to know that from you all right thank you so much please take care jai siaram